This is the second video in a video series I'm doing on a new plugin called Beaver Themer. Hi, my name is Adam from WPCrafter.com where I make WordPress videos for non-techies. And if you like the content in this video series, I'd ask you to consider clicking on the subscribe button and subscribing to the channel. And if you want email notifications when a new video is available, all you have to do is click on the cute little bell next to the subscribe button. Now in in this video, we're going to talk about custom headers and a concept called theme parts. And I'm going to show you examples of these and how that they can be used. In the prior video, it was about these things called theme layouts that you're going to be able to make using Beaver Themer. So you're going to essentially be able to customize the look of really cool things like WooCommerce product pages, blog posts, custom post types, etc. So to keep me on track, I'm going to go ahead and do this slideshow style, custom headers and custom theme parts. So let's get in on the custom headers. First of all, this is a feature that's only going to work on certain supported themes. Right now there are three themes. I know of a fourth one that's coming. So it's the Beaver Builder theme, the Generate Press theme, Genesis themes, and also a little theme that's coming out called Astro. Astra and uh, that's going to be a hot theme to take a look at and you get to create as many custom headers as you want. So essentially, you know what a header is, right? It's where your logo is. It's where your menu navigation is. And there's all kinds of opportunities to customize that area because that is the first thing your visitors see when they come to your website. I made a video about uh, three weeks ago where there was another theme developer that it made a crack at this whole custom header concept. I was a little harsh on them because they made it overly complicated and that's what I like about Beaver Themer it's so easy to create custom headers and I do consider this kind of like the holy grail of WordPress website development because you're now going to be able to unlock the first thing that someone sees on any website you're gonna have full control over that and it's a pretty exciting development and you can assign these custom headers however you want and this is so powerful because there there are certain areas of your website where if you have the same header on every single section of your website, it just doesn't make sense and it's also counterproductive. So if someone is, say you have a WooCommerce shop, someone's checking out your products, does it make any sense to show them your about page? in the navigation I mean you could put it in the footer but in the navigation does it make any sense to have your blog page there it really doesn't because you want to keep people focused on where they are on your website another excellent example is on my website I have a whole online learning course platform there and some of the the way my menu navigation is and what I'm doing in the menu it makes absolutely no sense when someone's actually in a lesson or in a course on my website so now with beaver themer you're going to be able to create custom headers and footers sorry I actually shouldn't put footers oops custom headers and footers you can dynamically assign them to bits and pieces of content however you want and um, it's I'm going to show you in a moment uh, some of the things that I'm already doing with it so next let's take a look at theme parts and this is a whole new concept that no one's ever heard of before so essentially what they are oops well let me tell you a little bit about it first first of all this as well as only on supported themes and it's the same supported themes that I talked about just a moment ago you can make as many of these as you want and you can assign them conditionally just like we were talking about with the custom headers and you're already seeing these things called theme parts whether you know it or not these are typically notices or calls to action or various things like that so I'll give you an example if you go to a website that has a product for sale you land on the product page and then from the top of the above the header a little notice comes out saying hey this is on sale for the next three hours um, go ahead and buy it now because when the sale's gone it is gone this is an example of a notice which can be now now can be easily implemented with a theme part 
chart. Another example and kind of how you're going to see it used on my website when I have my custom blog post layout. So say for example I have a custom blog post layout on something about Beaver Themer. Well right at the very top which is going to be the area right under the header I'm going to have a real thin little area there that says if you would like to know more about Beaver Themer check out this course something like that um, and I'm going to do that conditionally for all the content on my website this is powerful powerful stuff to be able to have these notices another example is maybe above the footer area of your website you want maybe a call to action for opting in or another great usage would be to have some rotating testimonials that's actually good to have all throughout your site and you can assign them conditionally to areas so if you are a WooCommerce shop owner and someone's on a page about a fidget spinner, you might want some reviews of how awesome your fidget spinners are. But then if they go and they are on a page about a fidget cube, there you don't want to have a testimonial or review of a fidget spinner. You want it to be of a fidget cube. And this is how you can have these conditional theme parts. Now, unfortunately, with the whole theme part concept, it really is duplicating some uh, functionality that a third-party developer has already created called Beaver Tunnels, and it's pretty much kind of doing the same exact thing. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at the custom headers. So here we are. Let me get back into my dashboard. Now, in the last video, you know I actually already created one. So if I go here to the home page, I click on shop, and then I click on my fidget spinner, you know that I already created a custom header, and I assigned it to anything having to do with fidget cubes so I have them all organized in a category if you're in a product in that category you're gonna see a different header so you can see it's all pretty much basic beaver builder stuff let's just go ahead and build one together right now so I'm gonna go into my dashboard I'm gonna go to builder and then theme layouts and I'm gonna go ahead and add a new layout and let's call this maybe um, a header for posts about fidget cubes. Okay, now that I've typed that in, I'm gonna choose the type and it's gonna be a theme layout. And then for the layout, here's your options, obviously header or footer. And these were the options we used in the prior video where we were creating singular posts templates for WooCommerce pages. And here's gonna be that option for creating a theme part. Okay, so let's go ahead and choose header, click on add theme layout. And what I can do right away is launch the page builder. And then here is my options for where it's going to be assigned to. Since I already know, let's go ahead and choose that now. So I'm gonna assign this to posts in a particular category about fidget spinners. And this is a category that I've already set up. And here's some of the uh, different header options that you have. Number one, you can make it a sticky header. I might as well choose that because I haven't actually tested it, so that could be a little bit dangerous. And then you can have it shrink when you start to scroll down the page. Let's just turn it on. We're just going to see what happens. Why not? And then what the overlay is, is the navigation will be overlaid on the content beneath it. So if there's a big uh, header image for the post the menu will be underneath it I'm not going to enable that now I haven't played with it so it might be dangerous in this video but maybe we'll do that after I just create the basic structure so I'm going to go ahead and click on publish and now I've created it but I haven't customized it in any way this will be actually interesting let me go and see what it looks like right now so if I click on that I'm going to click on the actual post right here and then it's already showing us the new header even though it hasn't been customized and this is a theme part I actually should get rid of real quick anyways I'm gonna go ahead and launch the page builder and this is what I love about beaver themer if you've used beaver builder 
You already know how to use the beaver themer. There is nothing to it. You know how to change this background row color. And uh, this is actually a secondary top bar that you see a lot in navigations. So, I mean, these are just two separate rows and these are essentially just modules right here. So here is my menu navigation module right here for my menu settings. And let me scroll this down. I can choose the menu that is assigned to that. So for a blog post, I might want a totally different menu and totally different options in those menus. Now you can choose whether you want it to be vertical, accordion, or expanded. So vertical is really going to be when you're making one of those vertical menus where it's not at the top. Those The headers kind of off to the side left or right. And there's some other different menu styles right here. We obviously can go accordion or expanded. I'm going to go back up to horizontal. I think that your more typical menu would be to have it be horizontal. I'm going to probably stick with that. We have our responsive options here as well, which is really nice. It's definitely consideration, a huge consideration when you are building out a header is what is that going to look like on a mobile device. So we have our mobile toggle options here and we also have the style that we can choose. I personally like a uh, kind of a miniature or a compact header style on a mobile device so I would probably go with inline. Inline would probably be your logo or site title to the left and then on the right you'd have yourself a hamburger icon or something like that. Uh, we also have our style here so I have the menu alignment by default is on the right but I can go ahead and make this on the left if I wanted like that and there's different options here for your colors and also for your sub menus and it's pretty awesome all the options that it gives you I mean you can really do some nice stuff with the menu I will say it doesn't give you the flashy that you may want with a menu like where you hover like hover effects right you hover and then there's a nice thin line underneath the menu item you're not going to get those now I don't think you're going to ever get those I don't think beaver builder themselves are going to build that into beaver theme or I think they'll let a third-party add-on developer like power pack or ultimate add-ons go ahead and develop that and I know that Ultimate add-ons already does have some of that. They just need to integrate it with the WordPress menu system, which I think they would be smart to do here very soon. So I've already gone ahead and I've aligned this to the left and you might be wondering, well, if I aligned it to the left, why is it so far in the middle? And that's because these are columns right here and I can easily just go ahead and resize my column however I wanted. So if I wanted a three column layout where I have my logo, I have my menu, and then I have something else here on the right, that's actually very easy. I would just go to add content, row layouts, and I would drag and drop this column in right there. And now I have a, oops, I put that in the wrong area. So let me get rid of this. Let me drag that column where I wanted it, right there. There we go, and now I have my new column right there. So um, obviously with menus, you have to be careful. You don't want your menu spilling into a second line. And also like this, you don't want your header name or logo taking up too much height like this one is right here. So what I would do here is just lower the height there to maybe 28 or something like that. But you're typically going to have a, um, a logo in there anyway. So let's just go to 28 to make this look good. All right. So there we have that. And right here, you, you know what is very popular these days is putting a button in your menu. And you can have one button or two buttons or something along those lines. So let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and click on Add Content. Now, what's nice is we can use the button module that comes with Beaver Builder if we want it or we can use it from uh, one of the button modules that you can get out of one of the add-on packs which typically gives you a little bit more visual styling options or you can even do a dual button from one of the add-on packs right there so you have to obviously be careful of the amount of width you're taking so let's just go ahead and use this button right here so let's see I'm gonna go ahead and change this text to order now 
All right, I'm not gonna put anything for the link. And what's nice when you're using one of these add-on packages, you get some more options. So I can go with maybe a transparent button like that. Uh, let's see how that's gonna look. And um, I would probably wanna change out my colors a bit. So I would make my text color, that's fine. The border color, I'm probably gonna wanna make that uh, white. So let me make that white. And let's see, that's all fine. And we can even change the hover colors if we wanted. That's fine, I'm not gonna customize that too much. Oh, but the alignment, I would probably want it aligned. Uh, let's see, I got this all screwed up. I probably want this aligned to the right. Here it is, structure alignment, center, I'm gonna make it aligned right, just like that. Okay, so there is my button. Now let's see, this is one thing that you might not be aware of, most people are these days, and actually I don't think we're gonna run into that problem here, and that is your column height alignment whatever, so let us me show you that. So if I go on any of these columns and I hover, there's this icon here that says edit column and I can go into column settings. Now in the column settings, it's the column height. Now by default this is set to equalize, um, that's set to yes and it's set to center, but I was noticed, noticing when I was playing with it, centering it to the top, or the alignment to the top just evened everything out a little better for some reason. So this is, by default, it's gonna be in the center, but ever so slightly, the menu is not center with what I have here. So when I went to the top, it did it just a little better, almost perfect. All right, and we have this custom header menu right now where this is aligned to the left and we have a button here on the right. So let's go ahead and save and assign this to something. This is a little different than the one I did earlier. I actually had the menu perfectly in the center. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit the theme layout and I think we might have assigned it. Let's see, we made it sticky, we made it shrink, we didn't do the overlay and we made it on the posts, so I guess if I clicked on refresh right here, we should see my new header. And there is my new header. Let's see. And there it is. When I start scrolling, it shrinks. Now, I obviously didn't uh, modify the top area right here of the header, but you can get the point. I like that. That's actually very slick. So let me actually get rid of this theme part, and then we're going to go ahead and attempt this overlay mode. So I need to go back into my theme part. I shouldn't have started this video with this assigned. Here, let me go like this, and that should get rid of my theme part. Let's see, no more theme part, there we go. Okay, so now, I like that. I'm gonna go ahead and see what happens when we make that menu transparent. Oh, this is dangerous when you do this on video. Okay, now it wasn't header layout, it was this one right here, the header posts fidget cubes. All right, overlay, yes. Okay, I'm gonna live on the wild side. I'm gonna update that, do a refresh and see what happens. Actually, that was not bad at all. You can see it just eliminated the color and pulled everything up. Now, for this, it doesn't look good in my opinion having this uh, top area right here because obviously I didn't uh, make everything in the white color. And I would probably want this menu pushed up more. So the beauty about this is I can easily just go back in here and make the change immediately. And I already know how to do all this stuff because I own Beaver Builder and I've been using it long enough that these changes only take a few seconds. So now let me do a quick refresh and see if I like that. Yeah, that's actually much better. I might want it a little tighter, so I might want to reduce some of the spacing here. So what I would do there is go ahead and get back into the page builder of my header and see if I can't tighten this up a little bit. So let's go ahead and go into my row settings and advanced and let's make these top and bottom paddings zero, like that, and that's tightened it up pretty good right there. And I'm gonna save it, and let's see what that looks like. Okay, we got a refresh here. 
I actually like that a lot. That looks fairly perfect for me. And you can change these hover options in the navigation. I didn't do that. And there we go. When I start scrolling, then my color pops out. And the order now button just fits in there perfectly. Everything fits in there just perfectly like that very professional and the beauty is when I go back to the home page it uses the the theme generated header so I can literally create as many of these headers as I want and assign them where I want logically with these options right here so you saw how I assigned it to the post category so I can also have a different header based upon whether someone's logged in or logged out so I hope you see that this is really unlocking some um, very interesting powerful options to really take your website and and have it be the very best experience for your website visitors and you already know how to do all this stuff it's just installing the themer and giving it a shot so the next is and I was just screwing around with it a little bit was these uh, theme parts um, I will give you a, ca a caveat with the theme parts if you're using a beaver themer post layout for maybe WooCommerce or for a blog post a lot of these theme parts you hook them into certain areas some of those areas you're not going to be able to I'll show you what I'm talking about right now uh, let's create a new one so I think in that scenario I was saying I wanted to have like a little tiny notice above a blog post and it would be sort of like a call to action so let's call this a fidget call to action there we go I'll use some abbreviations this is going to be a theme layout and for the layout I'm going to choose a part and I'm going to go ahead and click on add theme layout and here we are and I'm going to choose this is where it's a little different and it's a little technical but it's all like plain English and I think it will all make sense so you take these theme parts and you assign them to different areas on your website and then you choose when those will show okay so first we choose what's called the position so a position is for pages, the uh, page open, the page close, the header, that would be the area above the header. And you see that a lot when someone's trying to get your attention uh, for a sale or something like that. And there's before the header and then after the header. So that's going to be just underneath the header. And then for in the content, it can be before the content. And then there's various options there. The same for the footer. These post ones were the ones that were not working for me when I was using the theme parts when I was trying to assign it to a layout that I built with Beaver Themer. So you just might want to know that there. So I would probably do maybe like a before content and uh, for the location, let's go ahead and put it on all of my posts right here. So I'm going to choose posts like that and I'm going to choose all posts and it will be for all users. Let me go ahead and click on publish and then I'm going to go on launch page builder now because of the theme parts and all the different options with theme parts you don't have theme part templates so you notice when I created a new header it already had kind of a default one in there when I create a new post layout it already has a default in there so uh, not so when it comes to theme parts because could be anything you want so I'm gonna do something real basic so I'm gonna go ahead and take the headline like this and I am going to let me do the style first I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make it center aligned and I'll leave everything the way it is and I'm going to go ahead and type something in here okay so I've typed this in right there enjoy this content then you will love my fidget cube buyers guide click here now it's taken up way too much space I, I really like them when they're compact so and you're gonna see what I mean with all this so what I'm gonna do here I need to put a link in I want it so when anyone clicks on any of this text it's gonna take them to where I want them to go and I don't want to take them away from where they are so I'm gonna have this open in a new window and let me just choose my fidget cube product page okay so there it is I have that linked up so now let's uh, tweak the style of this a little bit so I'm gonna go here I don't want the 
font to be so large. So I'm going to change my font size to something custom. And let's see, it's going to pop it in at 24. That's still a little on the high side. So I'm going to go with 20 and I'll just take it how it is and uh okay so we want to reduce a lot of this margin here or the what the spacing so i'm going to go ahead and check on my row settings like this and i'm going to remove out that padding so i'm going to put in zero and zero and that already tightened it up right there that should be fine if i wanted to tighten it more i can reduce it for the actual module i put in so it's set to 20. Actually, let me go to 10 and then 10. Okay, there we go. And that tightened it up just like that. Perfect. So I have created a theme part. Let me go ahead and click on done and publish changes. All right, now let me go back in here and make sure I have this assigned right. So this is gonna be before the content on all my posts. Now to be really smart, a really advanced marketer is you would have relevant theme parts on relevant content. So if this was a theme part where I'm having a call to action about a buyer's guide for a fidget cube buyer guide, I would only want that theme part to show on content about fidget cubes. Okay, there we go. All right, so I've got this all saved out here. I'm gonna click on update and I'm gonna go ahead and um, go to my menu that I created and I'm gonna disable that real quick. Remember I created that menu, just a that new header uh, just a moment ago. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. Actually, I'm just gonna remove the overlay because I don't know <laughs> what's gonna happen. All right, okay, so here we are. Let me click on my fidget spinner, see what happens. There we go. So right here, I've got my custom header and it does stick like that. And then I have this right here. And so whenever anyone clicks on it, it's gonna take them to the link that I put in just like that. Now let me show you something really neat and this is what I'm gonna do. I'm not a fan of sticky headers. So let me disable this, the sticky header right here and do an update and let me do a refresh. Okay, so now it's not gonna stick. Let me show you how to make your theme part stick okay and this is how I'm gonna use it because I don't think it makes sense to have your header stick I think my call to action is what should be sticking so I'm gonna go ahead and add a new plugin let's see plugins add new and uh, I'm sorry if I'm going off here I'm gonna type uh, a search for sticky and I forget what the name of the plugin is. If I could spell it right, I'm sure it'll pull right on up. There it goes. There it is. Sticky menu or anything on scroll. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and install this. This is a great plugin. I actually have a video on it that I created last year. I use it to create sticky menus. So it's going to add a new option here to your settings called sticky menu. And let's go in here. We need to create a, a class name. So what I do is I do dot sticky. There it is. I always spell that wrong. I am not a good speller. Let me go ahead and toss that into my clipboard. And then let's see here. I'm not gonna tweak a lot of this stuff because I'm doing it all on the fly. We might need to, we might need to adjust the Z index right here in the advanced settings just to be on the safe side. I'm going to give it three nines like that. Okay, there we go. So what I'm trying to do, and this is good stuff, guys. It's worth the extra minute of your time. I'm going to make this call to action stick. All right. So I'm going to go back into my theme part like this. And it was my theme part. Uh, that wasn't it actually, darn it. It was right here, fidget post CTA. And I'm gonna go into launch the page builder like this. And for the row, I'm gonna go into my row settings and then I'm gonna go to advance and I'm gonna paste that dot sticky right there. But I don't think I need the dot actually. I'm just gonna say sticky because I want it to stick. I'm gonna click on done, publish changes. And let's see if I did that. And this is all on the fly, guys. If I make a mistake, please forgive me. Oh, there it is. You know why I'm not getting a color? Because I didn't specify a color. See, it's sticking. You can see the text. 
So if I was smart, I would <laughs> change the color, actually just set a color. All right, so I'm gonna go back into my rose settings and I'm gonna go to background. I'm gonna choose an actual background and it's gonna be a color and I will make it, let's just grab a quick color like that, that's fine. And I need to make this full width like that. All right, this is gonna be good. You might wanna make that uh, font smaller. Let's see, I'm just having fun now. I'm gonna do a refresh and you will see the power of this. So put your mind around this. You can have these conditional call to actions that are the right message on the right piece of content and check this out, it sticks. So now when someone comes here, they're reading and they're seeing this call to action. And if you don't have it stick like that, they just scroll right past it, right? But now it's just sticking right there. And I use this, this plugin that I use to make this stick all the time. And you saw how easy it is to use. So anyways, that is theme parts in a nutshell. That is custom headers in a nutshell. I hope you can see the power and the ways that you could use this to boost the engagement on your blogs, to have more relevant content, to increase the amount of leads your website can generate. Also, increase sales if you have an announcement about a sale or something like that. And I didn't even show you some of the more cool things you can do here when you mix in ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builder, mix in their countdown timers, their different button styles, heck, their different row styles. I'm hoping that you can see the power of Beaver Themer and how you can use it to really make things faster and how it's really one of those special tools that will pay for itself really quick. So I've shown you some things and I've only scratched the surface of custom headers, scratched the surface of these theme parts. I want to hear what is going on in your mind, how you think these could be used to make things better, faster, increase sales, increase engagement. I want you to go ahead and leave a comment down below of how you see these tools being used in your business.